Hello, I'm JW. Now, in a previous episode, we saw this smoke alarm and what did, in, or in fact, did not happen to it when the uh, 500 volts or whatever was applied. And at this time, we're going to actually take this apart and see what's inside, mainly because we've got it here and we might as well. So uh, let's get this opened up and see what's contained within. Now, previously, we saw this alarm and how shoving 500 volts into it or even 1000 doesn't necessarily cause it to be destroyed. So that's uh, all very well, but uh, we're going to take it apart this time. This plate, there's really nothing to it. It's just got this foam on the back to stop dust and things uh, getting through to the front, because obviously you don't want dust getting in the back of a smoke alarm. Just got the hole there for the cable. And on the front here, it's just got this little cover. Just clips off there. So normally that's on the ceiling. Wiring comes through from the back. And therefore, once you've attached the wiring to the terminals there, that just clips in position. And therefore, there's no live parts exposed here. And you can't actually get your finger in here because it's all shielded away inside there out of sight so uh, a nice piece of design and as i said in the previous videos if you fitted these before these are the aco ones when it comes to replace them it's literally just a case of unclip the old one and then just clip the new one straight onto the same plate it's been the same plate for pretty much forever and they're all compatible so if you place it with let's say the uh, new lithium one just goes straight on no problem whatsoever now this is the alarm itself and this is one with the uh, 9 volt battery back up in here and we'll just take the battery out of there. This battery is not actually connected until it's clipped onto the plate so you can just leave the battery in there forever. Just standard 9 volt alkaline battery there. This also expired in 2019 and that's another point with these if you've got these battery powered ones even if the mains has never failed so the battery was probably never used the battery is going to want replacing at certain points because all batteries have a date on them. These don't last forever, even in storage. The voltage uh, obviously will reduce over time. So say if you're going to get uh, new ones of these, I'd suggest getting the lithium ones, which have a rechargeable battery inside, non-replaceable. Therefore, you don't have to uh, worry about things like batteries going flat or whatever. Now, this is an ionisation alarm, and what this has inside is a very small amount of radioactive material. As it says here, it contains radioactive material. 0.9 microcuries of americium 241. Now, uh, yes, it is radioactive, but the amount of actual radioactivity here is absolutely minute. Plus, it's also going to be contained within its own metal canister, so there's no danger of radiation or whatever leaking out. Now, of course, these aren't designed to be opened or taken apart, but so what? We're going to take it apart anyway and just see uh, what's actually in it. So, handily, it's just a couple of screws here to undo. So we'll uh, get rid of those. And uh, before we take that off, notice there's another feature here that uh, if the battery isn't in there, there's a little tab that sticks up here, which means you can't slide it onto the plate on the ceiling because that will obviously get in the way and uh, prevent it from going on there. Just press it down when the battery's installed. So uh, it comes off very easily there. This is obviously going to be somewhat dirty because it's been in an installation for 10 years. So there's your test button, that is either just to press and hold to confirm that it's working, it should then sound, and also it's the hush button, so if you burn your toast or something and the alarm goes off, you can just press that to temporarily silence it. A shielding plate there just uh, goes over the top, and therefore that's the actual button pressing through on this bit. And then over here we've got these uh, moulded plastic pieces which go through to the indicator on the front just for the uh, LEDs there. Green one for normal operation, which has this black tube over it and then red for the other one indicating the alarm or various other statuses and they just go over the two LEDs there so they just sort of match up like that. So on the top here then we've got the section where the base plate goes in and then the four connectors here which is going to be the line and neutral for the power supply it's going to be the interconnect which goes off to other alarms and then the fourth one is going to be where the battery is connected because battery which goes over that side is only connected to the electronics when it's connected to the ceiling plate. So if you take it off the ceiling for any reason, it doesn't start beeping and alarming once it's uh, off of the ceiling there. This is the uh, sensing chamber in the middle here. Obviously we've got the radioactive uh, symbol on there. Piezoelectric uh, sounder here for the actual alarm noise there. Battery compartment there, which we saw on the other side, and it's got that sort of metal part there. So when the battery is installed it uh, pushes onto that piece like that and that prevents that little piece there from sticking up to prevent it going onto the ceiling 
and uh, it's just there so that you can't, in theory, put it on the ceiling without the battery being installed. And in terms of the circuit board, it looks to be all single-sided. They will take it out in a minute and have a look. So over this side, this is the actual testing switch, also the one for silencing it. So it is literally just a piece of metal on the circuit board, which then presses onto another contact on the board. Again, it's a very cheap way of manufacturing, but as I said before, these things are engineered to be as cheaply manufactured as they can be, while still maintaining the quality, because even a few pence, if you're making uh, say a million of these, even a few pennies makes a big difference to the total cost of manufacturing. It does have a variable uh, resistor there, so I assume that's going to be set in the factory just to uh, calibrate it in some fashion. Two LEDs here, the green one for normal operation on the mains, and then the red one to indicate an alarm condition. And then the wires here actually go through to the battery on the back there, so just the 9 volt battery comes through, goes under here, which is a bit of a strain relief arrangement, and then goes into the board there. And again, that might seem a bit rubbish for strain relief, but again, this has been designed so you don't have to have a separate component there. And that's perfectly adequate because, bearing in mind, you're not going to be changing this battery that often. And if we pull on that, you see it does grip the cables pretty well. So again, does the job. Now I'll just loosen the screw there, so now it's pretty much uh, released. And what else holds this board in are these plastic tabs here. So you just spring in from the side. So again, the segment just snaps in when it's manufactured and just uh, is held below those. So uh, we can just put, maybe bend those out of the way. And the circuit board will lift out. And again, there's two other tabs on that side as well. So again, just designed to be the uh, least number of components required. And we'll see on the back here that uh, that's actually a little nut there. So uh, it didn't actually screw into the base. So it is literally just clipped into the bottom there. Now we'll just take that off anyhow because uh, we've already unscrewed it. So why not? So the base there, it is literally just a single piece of molded plastic. And the only additional part is that uh, piece there for where the battery goes in with the little prong that sticks up. So that's pretty much that. Now if I have a look at the back of the circuit board. It is a single-sided design, so just the circuit traces on the back here. No components uh, of any kind. And all the components, of course, are on the top. And again, this is done because it's a much cheaper way of manufacturing. If you've got all the circuits on one side, then the machine needs to obviously just to do a single pass on that side rather than having to put them on the back as well. And uh, we can see there the main chip is going to be in the middle there. That's going to be underneath the uh, actual sensing device. Now this sensing device appears just to clip in there with those two plastic pieces, so that should just lift away. And there's the cover. Metal piece inside just goes down to that corner where the screw was on that side. So it simply goes through there, and then that's going to be the actual sensing chamber like that. Piezo sounder over this side, and again it just clips into the board like that. So, yep, just pops off. Just got the wires going to the side there, and it just sits over the top of the other components there. And then that is just literally a cap which goes over the other contact being on the side there via that screw into the circuit board. So yeah, a little tab there, and again that's just soldered through on the back to make the additional connection there. Other than that there is surprisingly little on this board. So there's obviously a chip under there, but uh, just got the various uh, passive components over this side. A few resistors, a few diodes there, and then pretty much the same situation over this side. So yeah, that's the switch for the uh, testing function. And that is pretty much it. So it really has been optimised down to the minimum number of components. And also interesting to see here that there's additional components here which are not used. So it's fairly likely that this uh, same circuit board is used for other models of this, so which have the uh, optical sensing unit instead of the radioactive one. And again, that makes sense because it's obviously much cheaper to have a single board rather than having different ones for different purposes. And in terms of what's underneath the sensor unit there, not a whole lot. There's a single chip in the middle there, which no doubt is going to be a custom job which has been designed to do everything in terms of the sensing control and alarm output and everything else. 
And you see under there, there's also a few additional components there. It looks like a couple of resistors and a capacitor under there. And again, surprisingly little in these things. Again, there's even the other side of the capacitor across the end there. And see the other side of those resistors there. You can see this side where they've got the one of the contacts from that going across to the leg of the chip directly. That's presumably going to be a hand solder arrangement because there's no machine which can get in there and bend the leg up and uh, solder it like that. But uh, as we can see there, that is pretty much all you've got. And in terms of the chip underneath, there it is. Good luck finding that anywhere because it's almost certainly going to be some custom made piece specifically for smoke alarm. So that's it. And as we saw, just those couple of resistors and the couple of capacitors under there. And let's say that's the whole lot. So uh, that's the full circuit board on the top there. And that's what's on the other side, just literally the pins coming through from the devices on the top. So that's pretty much uh, what's inside there. Surprisingly little, but uh, say it's obviously been optimised to minimise the production cost for that. Most of the cost of this, of course, was into the uh, development of the custom chip and whatever else in there. Now, as I saw previously, it does have radioactive material inside, and you might be thinking, well, it's radioactive, it's going to cause death and injury instantly. Well, in reality, no, it isn't. First of all, 0.9 microcuries of a Americium 241, that is a microscopic, tiny little amount. So tiny, in fact, it's not going to be uh, even noticeable to actually see it. And the second thing is that uh, Americium is an alpha emitter, so it's not giving off dangerous, uh, say, gamma rays or whatever. It's giving off alpha radiation. And alpha radiation can be damaging if you're going to eat it or inhale it or something like that. However, alpha radiation is easily stopped by your skin or even just a sheet of paper. So uh, as long as you're not going to be shoving it in your body and grinding it up and inhaling it, then there isn't any real risk here. As I say, just your skin itself will stop that. It's only going to go in one or two cells deep at the absolute most. So the risk here is, of course, incredibly low, but... Uh, if you were to, say, grind this up and inhale it, then you'll probably end up with lung cancer. So, obviously, we're not going to be doing that. So, although they are radioactive, risk is incredibly low. And so, insignificant amount of material. And plus, it's an alpha emitter anyhow, which, uh, say, doesn't really get into your body unless you deliberately put it in there. And if you don't want uh, radioactive bits in your house, then the easy answer is just to buy an optical detector, which doesn't have any radioactive bits in it whatsoever. And those are also preferred now anyway because they're generally more reliable at detecting smouldering and smoking fires, whereas these ones are generally better at detecting fast flaming fires. And the reality is that certainly in house fires, most house fires do not start out with big flames, they start out with smouldering and smoke. So although these are effective, the optical ones are generally better in most situations. So that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.